In the last lecture, we talked about convergence of a Taylor series, and we had a very simple theorem which says that if the error term goes to zero as n goes to infinity, then the series that you develop indeed converges to the function in the interval where uh, it, it converges. Okay, so in the lecture before the last lecture, we developed this as the Taylor series for sine of x. And we said that by looking at these terms and look, using the ratio terms, we can see that this series converges, right? For all numbers negative infinity, negative infinity to infinity. But we didn't say it converges to this as a sine of x because we didn't have a way of checking that. Now we can use that error theorem to check that, okay? We want to show that indeed, if I take any x, x equals 5, 15, 1 billion, I plug them in here into this series, it actually ends up equaling sine of that uh, value. So what are we going to do? Let's look at the error now. Let me take the absolute of this because the value is zero. And this, what is the error term? It's the n plus one derivative of some value z or n plus one factorial times x minus c to the. Uh, uh, well, we developed this at uh, x as uh, c equals zero. So this is, in this case, it's just uh, x minus 0, so it's just x to the n, okay? Okay, now, the tricky part is always this way, this one. But as we have seen before, what we do is we say, what's the worst value that we could get here that could make this error as big as possible? Well, these are the higher derivative of, z, uh, of uh, sine of x evaluated at some value z, right? That z will depend on n, Z depend, will depend on the x itself as well. So we have no idea where the z is. But we know that all the derivatives of sine and the nth plus 1 derivative of sine, they are either going to be plus minus sine x or plus minus cosine x, right? We saw the derivatives earlier the sine and cosine, the negative sine, negative cosine, finally back to sine. And all of these, no matter what x you plug in, the value is going to be less than equal to 1, right? So this, one is the biggest this can get, right? The absolute of these values. So this is less than or equal to x to the n, absolute of x to the n, over n plus 1 factor over. Because n plus 1 factor is already positive, I don't need to put an absolute term. Now, factorial, uh, exponential, right? If I plug x equal 5, I get 5 to the n over n plus 1 factor over. What's the limit of this as n goes to infinity, right? So the limit as n goes to infinity, this limit is zero, right? For any x, for any x, this limit is zero. So the error is trapped between zero and zero. Using the squeeze theorem, we know that the, the absolute of the error is going towards zero, and so the error itself is going towards zero, right? So, So this thing equals zero. As n goes to infinity, you calculate the error term of the nth polynomial at a given x, it equals zero for every x. Okay. For every x in, in all number, uh, real, uh, the real line, all real numbers. Because this limit is indeed zero for every x. Okay? Thus, indeed, right? Sine of x equals this series. Okay? So this is a very concrete example where we're showing. So let's recap what we've done. We took sine of x, we took its derivatives higher it is at, at x equals c equals 0. We constructed the Taylor polynomial, a Taylor series using the template. Now the two issues. Does the Taylor series converge? Yes, it converges, but you can just do the simple ratio test. Then does it converge back to the function? And for that, this theorem helps us. We, we show that the error goes to 0 as n is higher than that. So indeed, this series that we developed indeed equals sine of x for every x in the real line. Uh, and for every x, for every real line. Okay, and so this sums up our uh, approach to developing Taylor series. We're going to summarize this in the next lecture and look at more examples.